Hello there. Welcome to a tyke farming in the Philippines. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, ding a ling ding dong, that bell. It's Tuesday morning, 6.30, no one on site yet. It's an overcast morning, nice and cool. Um, they're taking more trees down in the plot next door. The, the guy was around trying to sell it to me um, a couple of days ago. Um, it's, a, it's a rectangular block, same as this one, but the frontage is on to what you could call the main road, and we're on the side road. But he wants to divide it up and sell a strip along this. Oh, I'm pointing with my fingers, but the camera's this way. Along this fence line. Uh, but he wants to keep all the part of the block which is bordering that um, other road. So I, I don't have the money to buy it anyway. Uh, if I was going to buy it, I'd want to buy the whole of it. Um, it's maybe I, I got ambitions to uh, open a Sally Sally shop on that road with me financing it. <laughs> yeah, I'll do that, okay. Uh, and he's wanting quite a lot of money per square metre. So we'll see how it'd be interesting to see whether he gets a buyer or not. It uh, gives you an indication of the local economy. But the same family sold a block over here um, for 1,000 pesos a square metre, which is what I paid here. And the block over there is on the hillside, whereas this one's flat. So they sold it. Uh, Soy brokered the deal and uh, it was all ready to go. And then they upped the price from a thousand pesos to 1500 pesos a square meter. And of course, the fellow backed out. Um, so they never sold that block. And I don't think they'll sell that one. They, they're wanting 1800 pesos a square meter for that one. It's, it's more valuable if you include the roadside, um, but less valuable if you don't. Um, we heard from Ramel's wife this morning, he's hopefully getting out today, um, if the bill's paid of course, but it, it's a bit different in reality here, um, you, you see on YouTube, and it's all perfectly true, you know, if you don't pay the bill you don't get out. Um, but in reality for local people here, they can't keep people with nothing in hospital and the bill going higher when they've no means to pay. Now, with Wynne's wife, when she gave birth to the little lad they've got, um, she went into hospital, which the government encourages all the women to do, do here now. And um, they had a bill, and Phil Elf paid so much, and they still had a big bill, which is no way they could pay it. Um, and then they went to the welfare office in the hospital, and they reduced it in a big way. And we had um, a saving scheme going, what they run here. And that saving scheme paid out to win three days before she gave birth. So it all worked out well for them. It took most of the savings scheme he was in. Um, and Ramil was similar in so much that he had a smaller savings scheme and Jean paid it out for him a couple of days before it was due. Um, because when he first went into Denau Hospital, 
the scratch together 5,000 pesos and deposited it at the now hospital in case he needed painkillers and antibiotics because if there's no money deposited they don't get them um, and then they transferred him to the city the ambulance and everything will have to be paid for um, so I, I don't know how they fix financially but they won't be good um, he got his savings um, but that will be used up in a flash he had a cap scan no idea what it cost but uh, it won't be a lot of money in western money but there's a lot of money here I'm sure but uh, I'll find out in due course if he needs to borrow some money I'll lend him some money and take it off his wages so as usual I make two or three videos throughout the day um, or oh, the cat I've been met, meaning to mention the cat I'll turn the camera around anyway yeah I've been mentioned, I mean to mention the cat she's not here she's disappeared so I, I think she's probably being catnapped um, so I said to Jean, the, the other cat, we've only got one left up the sorry sorry shop now. Um, get a call up for her. And uh, that tells everybody that she belongs to somebody. And the old cat's there, fast asleep. Um, so she's hanging around the piggery all the time, which is good. And the young cat hangs around the cabin all the time. And the scent, scent of cats is, is enough to keep vermin out. But this big cat she catches, uh, we're not feeding her at all at the minute. Um, there's plenty of food about for her. But when they have a lunch, the lunch down here, you know, she gets bits and pieces off, off them. The chickens are all okay this morning. I've put some new fermented feed in, which earlier on they were, they were growing at. It's just like a soup, there's a lot of liquid with it. But they're, they're preferring it to the dry feed, that's for sure. The bowls were empty this morning, I filled them up last night, they were empty this morning. And when these are empty this afternoon, I'll fill them up again. Winds, yesterday wind, yesterday morning wind, wind. I let him do the feed for the uh, fermented feed, and it's trying to strain it, strain the water off it, and uh, I said no you've got to feed them the water as well because it's full of nourishment, um, I said they'll get to the feed because they'll drink the water to get to the feed, it's not like ducks who can get the feed from underneath the water, but just drinking that soup it's f full of nourishment. And if you get too much water, then just put a few pellets in a bowl and make a mash with the fermented water. But no, it's all new to him. Um, he's never seen it before. I've never done it before. It's all new to me in that respect. But I know, I understand uh, what's going on. Right, so I'll leave this video there. I'll go and make a cup of tea, waking up properly, and uh, I'll make another video if anything happens, or I'll make a video at lunchtime. 
Oh, the the, the uh, typhoon's still heading this way. Gene was telling me this morning. I don't know if it's a tropical storm or a severe tropical storm at the moment. It's in it's in the Philippine area anyway, and it's apparently predicted to landfall in the Visayas, which is our area. So it, it could be bad, but hopefully it'll, add, it'll head north as they normally do, and uh, we'll miss it. But we'll have to wait and see in a couple of days' time for that. So I'll leave this video there and I'll do another one shortly. Eight o'clock. Roger's in this morning. He's cutting some grass around the the cabin for starters. And uh, Asan's in with the well pump which stopped working yesterday. Um, so I don't know what's wrong with it. It has been working fine, automatically. Uh, there must be plenty of water in the well because we had a lot of rain. So we'll we'll see what he finds. It's uh, one o'clock, so we're going to see what we've done this morning. Uh, wind finished off the cementing on the front fence I think there's still a bit in by the water shop to do um, and Roger cut a bit of grass down here out the way while they were waiting for Soy to uh, finish putting the clips up I'll go this way The typhoon Jean was on about, it's heading for uh, northern Luzon. It's going to clip the top of the Philippines again. So it's not going to hit here with any force. So as you can see, we're net hanging up on that side. And we're putting net up on the end bit most of it now. There's more coming. Yeah, they're not here yet, but they'll maybe be here later today. And, yeah. There's another packet on its way. Chickens are a lot more lively with this, these doors off. I've noticed, and they like to sleep at the entrance here. I got this delivered this morning for chopping up vegetables. Um, I tried it, yeah, it chopped them up no problem. Not an expensive mean machine, it's a cheap machine, but. That's the sort of thing it chopped up. That was just a, a banana leaf. The bigger thing's supposed to do the stems. But I put some green leaves in, meringue, meringue leaves or whatever you call them. They've all been eaten. And I put the banana leaf in. Uh, they've all been eaten. So, but yeah, they're liking the green pick. I'll maybe get a banana stem. 
tomorrow morning and see if the machine I'll I'll chop that up. I mean if it is it's too too thick for the machine it's easy enough to split them in half or quarters, it's only soft stuff. Uh, I would think. But yeah, it's it's giving them alternatives to pallets and uh, there won't be a great deal of feed value in the banana stalks but there's vitamins and stuff in and uh, it will cheapen your bill a little bit I'm certain and it will be have a bigger impact on pigs if the chickens uh, do well on different feeds and cope with it then I'll uh, put it into the pigs as well. So I'll leave this video there and I'll do another one at uh, tea time. Ah, are you flying again? Ah, uh, carol singers. I missed it, so they're going to do it again. Oh, he's got a xylophone. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. So it's uh, ten to five. We'll go and have a look and see what we've done today. got all the netting fitted down this side it's all clipped up the top and fastened with flat bar at the bottom and uh, we started we've got clips halfway across this end um, so they've gone as far as they can with this um, and all the netting's in that bag to finish this end we've got the flat bar all drilled out and uh, 
the oil plugs in. Uh, right the way along. So we can't do any more with the netting until the other clips arrive. On the website, it was in Mandawi, which isn't far away, but they've been in Mandawi for two days. So maybe tomorrow they'll be here. Um, on the last clip, but one, I think, I talked about this chopping machine I got today. And we tried it with a banana leaf, and it chopped it up quite nicely. Um, and the chickens gobbled it up. Uh, we've got wet feed in there, we've got dry feed. I put leaves, these barangay leaves, or whatever they call them, in this morning. That's all done. Oh, there's a few leaves left there, if you can see them. These are smaller birds, they can't reach the top, that's why they're still there. So I'll unhook it and I can finish the rest off. But um, the thing is, uh, eating a, a good variety of different feed now, and they seem to me to be more lively, maybe because it's overcast this last two days and it's not as hot. But maybe because the front's been opened up and a very different variety of food and uh, they seem to be thriving on it. Yeah, they're, they're looking good. We did, did have a bird die three days ago, one of these smaller ones that they're getting quite large. So Wynn's put uh, some antibacterial anti in the water yesterday, today and the next two days. He reckon he's seen um, a bit of uh, snot on the beaks. But uh, yeah, they're, they're doing well, oh well, so we, we had 105, so we're down to 102, and some, a lot of these smaller ones came in as Dale chicks, so we've lost very little. Um, so tomorrow, until the clips come, we can't go any further with the netting. But to get this wall in will be a good, a good thing to do. And then we can start putting the steel matting up. And then all, all this screened off with mosquito netting as well. And the other thing we can do now, the netting's up on this side, is the bird netting from the uh, guttering down to this fence. I've got two packs of it. I don't, I can't remember what size uh, or whether it's going to be big enough to stretch to the fence. It'll have to come down the fence past the railings, of course, as well. Um, but I'll bring that down tomorrow and they'll maybe get on with that or they'll maybe get on with the wall. It doesn't matter. Because the birds can't go out here. Well, they can go out here, but I don't want them. I want it finished before we let the birds out of this shed. I want the bird netting on, keep wild birds out. Um, yeah, so it's all coming together. It's, it's quite interesting, quite exciting. I'm very happy with the way things are going. Now, tomorrow, I'm going to cut a... Banana, all, all the banana tree down which fruited last year. Um, I'll mince up the, the leaves and I'll use the whole banana, banana stem. Now there's going to be quite a lot of material. So 
so I'm thinking I've got plenty barrels um, if I just fed it a bit every day then the majority of it would be wasted so I'm going to stuff the barrels with it put water on and ferment it fer ferment the banana stems so it'll keep and I can um, continue using it till it's gone and that should work so it's another thing to try all the experimenting I'm doing on the chickens and then when the pigs come in um, what works I'll feed to the pigs um, give them a variety of feed give them some green pig now you're not going to grow pigs out on bloody banana leaves and banana stems you're going to get some vitamins out of them um, you're going to get the pigs are going to be more interested in the feed but to grow pigs you need protein um, when I'm next downtown I shall buy you can't buy sacks of maize here whole grain maize but I'll buy you can buy it by the kilo I'll buy a couple of kilos of maize and um, I'll buy a a kilo of soya bean and if there's no soybean I'll, I'll buy a kilo of mung beans because I want to try fermenting that and to see whether a whole grain of maize when it's fermented and fed to the chickens I want to see what goes comes out the other end whether it's all been digested or whether there's uh, yellow skins uh, or whole grains coming through the chicken. Um, as I un uh, from what I've read, we should be able to get the entire grain digested by fermenting it. Now, if that's the case, I shall uh, seek sacks of grain grain's not grown in this area so there's no chance of getting it at the farm gate at the farm gate it's about uh, last time I looked I think it was 23 pesos a kilo um, down the feed store it's uh, around about 50 just under 50 pesos a kilo which is a similar price to the um, pellets of course, in the pellets, you've got all sorts of different things in them. Whereas uh, the full maize grain, um, I don't know the percentage of protein, but it's, it's quite good. And soya beans are uh, even better. But you need beans, you need to get the protein levels up. But if, if they're digested by chickens, with fermenting they'll be digested with pigs with fermenting and I can maybe cheapen my feed by buying different grains in and making my own recipe for pig feed I'd have to buy minerals and vitamins in which I've got ordered for the chickens but the pig minerals and vitamins are different um, so this is what we're experimenting with um, but the animals are going to be more contented on a different feeds, a better diet. Um, it's like if you ate porridge every day, three times a day, you'd get sick of porridge. And pigs will get sick of bloody pellets. But from birth they've known no different, so... But I, I would think if you've got a varied diet, the pigs will, will thrive more. That's the way I'm thinking. But banana leaves by the self are no damn good whatsoever. 
you've got to get the protein in them if you want them to grow and grow quickly which is what it's all about but uh, if you're filling them up possibly if you're filling them up with um, uh, vegetation whether it's these leaves which are high in protein or banana stems uh, which won't have much feed value but you've got the green pick for them um, they'll be more enthusiastic feeders I would think they'll, they'll, they'll get into the grain but then they'll get into say lunchtime if you give them vegetation they'll get into that with relish and they'll be ready to get into the, the uh, grains again at tea time enthusiastically I would think if I'm making any sense of that, I lost the plot a little bit then. but that's what I'm looking at that's, that's what I'm experimenting with that's what I'm trying to do so we'll leave this video there and I'll do another one tomorrow